The horrors of Bucha laid out in a black sea of body bags. Ukrainian police officers with the gruesome task of identification. How many have we collected? Around 300, says the cemetery manager. Many are still buried in gardens, in yards. I think it will take a while to know the exact number. The atrocities here spurring the US to slap a new wave of sanctions on Moscow. We're going to keep raising the economic cost and ratchet up the pain for Putin. Getting more personal for the Russian president, his daughters Katerina and Maria added to the list of punished elites, with the belief the autocrat's family may be hiding his wealth. The wife of his foreign minister, Sergei Lavrov, also targeted, as well as full blocking sanctions on the country's largest bank and its biggest private financial institution. A move in lockstep with Western allies, with Russia's GDP expected to shrink by 50%. This evening, the U.S. ramping up military aid to Ukraine, $100 million for more Javelin missiles in the past 24 hours. Also being sent, tiny but lethal switchblade drones. And they are training Ukrainians already here in the U.S. on how to use them. Tonight, more than 100 of these exploding drones on the way to Ukraine, with more to follow. The switchblade drones are small enough to be carried in a backpack and launched from anywhere. Unlike long-range drones like the Predator, which fires its missiles and returns to base, the switchblade drones are the missiles, packed with explosives and some able to fly up to 25 miles away. This kamikaze-like drone is launched from a tube, its operator guiding it toward a target and then slamming the drone into it. Twenty-six million people confined to their homes and no end in sight. Following a public uproar, Shanghai officials have now allowed parents to stay with children infected with COVID-19. But the full lockdown, which started in parts of China's largest city 10 days ago, has been extended. Images almost identical to the beginning of the pandemic two years ago. Shanghai's residents have been ordered to stay at home. Only supermarkets and pharmacies are still open. No one knows how long the lockdown will last. Even with very low case numbers, Chinese authorities impose curfews, mass testing and seal off entire cities. The case now in Shanghai. State media is reporting that these measures could reduce new infections to zero within two weeks. Overnight, word that multiple members of the Secret Service have been suspended, accused of accepting extravagant gifts from two men who were allegedly impersonating federal agents. The gifts are not cheap gifts. More than a dozen FBI agents rushed into this luxury apartment building in Washington, D.C. Wednesday, arresting Arian Tarsday and Hader Ali for allegedly pretending to work for the Homeland Security Department. According to court documents, the men also provided gifts to Secret Service agents, including rent-free apartments totaling $40,000, iPhone surveillance systems, a drone, a flat-screen TV, and law enforcement paraphernalia. Four members of the Secret Service were suspended as part of the investigation, and one of them was on First Lady Jill Biden's protective detail.
Well, the whistleblower who shared Hunter Biden's laptop from hell with the media says he has a lot more to share. Jack Maxey spoke exclusively to the Daily Mail and claimed he and his colleagues have around 450 gigabytes of deleted material, which includes 80,000 images and videos and more than 120,000 archived emails from the president's son. Maxey said he intends to publish them to an online database and because of this, he has fled from the United States to Switzerland out of fear the Biden administration will retaliate against him. Jack Maxey is the whistleblower who had his hands on Hunter Biden's damning laptop that has plagued the Democrats since the 2020 election. In order for Jack Maxey to release what he found, he started to post documents and emails on a file sharing site in October 2020, a month before the election between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. Within an hour, the files were taken down by what he assumed was the US government working to destroy any of Hunter's personal activity being shared. It's almost six months since Sudan's military seized power, and the opposition remains vocal. On Wednesday, protesters in the capital Khartoum and several other cities once again took to the streets to voice their anger at the military and demand they hand over power to a civilian government. Protesters are also commemorating the third anniversary of a sit-in in front of the army headquarters. That sit-in led the military to depose longtime President Omar al-Bashir after months of protests and sign a power-sharing agreement with the protest movement, an agreement that was dissolved when the army took over last October. We have rather shocking news for Android users now. Dozens of apps on the Google Play Store have been found to be infected with a software that secretly collects user data. According to a media report, the malicious software was developed by a company linked to U.S. security agencies. The report further says that the Panama-based company Measurement Systems paid app developers to include its code in their apps. This allowed the company to gather data from millions of users around the world. The software enabled apps to collect personal data like phone numbers, email addresses and GPS data. Some of the apps that were tampered with included Muslim prayer apps as well. A speed trap alert app, a QR code scanner among many others. The harmful software included in the apps is said to have been downloaded at least 60 million on 60 million Android devices. Google has currently removed the infected apps from its Play Store, but these apps that have been banned or prohibited harvesting of user data can apply for reinstatement in the Google Play Store if the offending code is removed.